Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can remove duplicate values from an array so it's filtered down to unique values only. So there's two ways of doing this, a longhand version and a shorthand version so I'll show you both of those and after that I'll do a speed test so we can see which one of them is faster because this might be an important criterion that helps you decide between which one to use. So starting with the longhand solution, this involves applying the filter method to your array. And when you call filter, you need to pass in a function to it. Okay, and this function is going to run as many times as there are values in the array that you call it upon. So in this case, it's going to run six times. And what you have available to you each time the function runs is the value of the current item you have the current index value and you also have in each function the value of the array. So in case you're not familiar the way filter works is if for one run of the function it returns true then it's going to keep that particular value and pass it into the new array it creates. So that's going to be the return value of calling filter so let's take a look at this in the console log. At the moment, it's returning true every single time the function runs. So what you get is a replica of the original array because nothing was discarded. If it returns false every time, then you end up with an empty array because everything was discarded. So the way the method I'm about to show you works is it checks the first index value of each item in the array and checks whether the current item is at that index value. If so, it is kept. If not, it is discarded. So you end up with only the first instance of the value in the array. So to get the first index value of a particular value, you can call index of on the array, passing in the value you want to check. So each time that's going to be the value of item. And you want to check whether that index value matches the index value of the current item. So you can do that by checking it against the value of index and then making the outcome of this comparison the return value of the function. So the first time this function runs, the first index value of dog is zero and the current index is zero, so it's going to return true. The second time the function runs, the index of dog the first instance is zero and the current index is one so the second instance of the dog is going to be discarded and it's going to be the same for the fish and the owl so the end result is that filter returns an array of unique values so this is the first and longhand way that you can remove duplicate values from an array now let's move on to the shorthand way so because it's all on one line, this solution, I'm just going to write it directly into the console log here. Now for the shorthand, the first thing you do is to create a new set object and set accepts an iterable. So you can pass the array into set just like that as it is. So a set object is a container of unique values. So it's automatically going to remove any duplicates for you. So if we take a look at the console log, we have a set object here with three unique values. But if you just want to remove duplicate values from an array, then the final result you want is not a set object, but an array of unique values. Now, what we saw for the set object is a container of unique values that is array-like. So there's a method you can use to convert array-like objects into an array and that is on the array object and you call the from method and then just wrap whatever it is you want to convert into array inside it and then you end up with an array. Another way that you can write the shorthand which is doing pretty much the same thing is to spread the values inside the new set into a new array. So you can also do it this way, I'm spreading each of those individually. It's like I'm placing individual items in a new array and I end up with 
an array of unique values again. Now, given that both the longhand and shorthand solutions lead to the same outcome, something you might want to help you decide which one to use is a speed benchmark between the two solutions. So for this, I'm going to be using an online benchmarking service called jsbench.me. Under the hood, it's using the jsperf library for speed benchmarking. So the way that it works is you place each solution inside its own test case. So I'll do that first of all. So the longhand solution first of all, and then the shorthand solution as a second test. Now I'm going to modify the shorthand code because the longhand code, it's storing the result in a reference called res. So to make a fair test, I also want the shorthand solution to be leading to the same outcome. Now before running the test, there's a bit of code that precedes both of these solutions, and that is the creation of the array. So I can place that in setup JavaScript up here, and this is going to effectively precede both of the solutions in code without me having to create the array individually in each test case. Okay, so now the test is ready to start. So we'll see which of the two solutions is quicker. So JSBench is running multiple samples and comparing them to one another. And it should soon give us a result. So it's telling me that actually the longhand version is faster than the shorthand version. So even though there's less code in the shorthand, it's actually about 25% slower than the longhand solution. Now for completeness, I'm not going to use array.from here. Instead, I'm going to spread into a new array. So we'll see if this makes any difference in the speed test. So try running the test again. Okay, so now we have the outcome. Again, the longhand is faster and the shorthand is actually about 20% slower, even using the spread instead of array.from. So the takeaway here is that the longhand solution, even though it involves writing a bit more code, it's actually more performant than the shorthand solution. So the fastest way to remove duplicate values from an array is using the filter method and comparing the indexes. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below. It helps with the algorithm and others to find the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel.